Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. Right, today's video is going to be slightly different. You might enjoy it, you might not. Um, I know some of you techie guys who like the techie stuff more is going to enjoy it a bit more. But to be honest, after the week I've had, um, I've had several illnesses this year. It's been my second stomach bug alone um, this weekend. I've generally sort of, having sat down at home for three or four days, I've, I've, I've had a bit of a think really on my sort of general health and well-being. And um, it's given me time to sort of reflect on the channel, the business, the work we've got in and what have you. And what I need to do as a person, what you need to do for my mental health alone, my physical health and, um, and the way I need to go about it. But that's for another video. Um, but today's video, guys, all I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be harping on about any sort of miserable warranty claims or anything like that in today's video. So you guys that sort of crave the the warranty stuff in our videos you may as well look away now but what we're going to be doing is we've got the 200 block over there the one i put the ductile iron liners in um, i'm going to be honing it out basically so we've left two thou in the bores and um, we're going to be honing that out so i'm just going to set the the tripod up over there with my camera and just talk you through the exact steps of honing the barrels it may give you a bit more of a sort of engineering thought process into why we leave things the sizes we do and the processes we do with um with the delapina hone over there so yeah hope you enjoy guys um see you at the end of it i have set the camera up here i haven't done this for a while i've set it up on the cosworth 200 block that i put the liners in and you can see now we face the block and the liners block face is nice the liners are now flush with the block face and these are all ready to hone so what I'm going to do is I'm trying to, going to try and explain to you, although I've done this before, I'm going to try and explain to you, probably in more simple terms, um, how we set about just honing the last couple of thou out of this block, the processes and what, what's important and why we do what we do. So first of all, as you can see, I've done these three bores here, but you can see this, this one here is all finished honed. Um, although I've only just finished that and it's got to cool down, uh, the first process we do, we've got the boring, the bore gauge here, and what I normally do is I set this bore gauge. Uh, you've got the little hand here, which is each increment on the little hand is ten thou, and he, each increment here is one thou, and that's one thousandth of an inch. Okay, this is an imperial bore gauge. Uh, not a metric one so for all you guys that work in metric do bear with me this is imperial so obviously with this block here the piston sizes the piston size does come in metric but we just convert that to imperial because i find it easier to just work in that when i'm machining um, but if you work in metric then it's you know and you're used to that then it's absolutely fine and each little tiny increment is an increment of a tenth of a thou. Okay, so what we're working to here is pretty much about a tenth of a thou, but we're aiming for absolute zero, and that is the the sort of nominal bore size for this particular piston, which is 90.82 millimeters. Okay, so with this, I've set this on the micrometer gauge. So you set the micrometer um, to 90.82, which equates to whatever it is, 3.5756 or something in, in Imperial. The, big, the little hand will be on the zero and the big hand will also be on the zero. So if we check this ball that we've already done, obviously it's cooling down now so you can see we're going just over the zero. So when it gets to the zero, that is what you want to end up with. When you go slightly over, see that's about quarter of a thou over now so it's obviously cooling down you've got about quarter of a thou to come out of that bore so what we normally do is we measure first of all in the y plane that way we check top middle and the bottom of the bore just to make sure we've got consistency and what you find sometimes when you've been honing is as these stones can wear now these are the stones 
So as those stones wear, they sometimes wear unevenly. So they will wear probably more so down the bottom. So what tends to happen is you start to cut a bit more out the top of the bore than you would the bottom. Then what we have to do is we just dress these stones. There's, there's a stone either side and then you've got um, at 90 degrees, you've got a guide stone, a, a, a guide either side of there. So we normally dress the top of the stone just by sort of, um, by feel really, with, a, with another coarse stone. Just dress that down, um, put another cut on and you then find it normally just sort of evens itself up. The one reason we leave a couple of thou in, in the bores from boring it to honing it is because you can see that you've got, obviously you've got fairly coarse finish from, from boring it. Um, it's not that coarse, but it's just, you know, it's not the correct crotch hatching and it's not the correct finish. So um, we leave two thou in. Obviously, sometimes when you bore it, you can end up with very slight inconsistency within the bore, um, just from the boring bar. So obviously with honing it, that trues that up. So if we measure this one here, you can see that we are about two thou left in that bore to come out, which is ideal. So usually when you put your first honing cut on, it takes it down to about a thou or so. And then you sort of go from there and in steady increments. You can see that bore now is starting to, starting to cool and we're up to about half a thou. Half a thou at the top. So the bottom, the bottom has stayed size. So that is on zero. The middle, you're up to about a quarter to half, and then at the very top, you're up to half. So that means it's basically depending on the um, depending on the thickness of the the wall thickness of the bore from top to bottom depends on how much it's going to shrink when it gets warm. When you obviously hone it, and we have got a honing oil that goes on, which acts as a one a lubricant and two a coolant. Um, but as I say, it. it all depends really on the design of the block and the line of thickness as to how it's going to cool. So all we've got to do here with this one by the looks of it is just sort of take a bit more out the top and slightly out the bottom. So really we want to be removing no more material down the bottom. So first of all what we do is we just wind, wind the stones out so they meet the bore but with no pressure on there. Now I normally set the coolant pipe so it is not going in the centre but sort of over to one way and going in the rotation of the stones and the reason for that is if you do it right in the middle it tends to the stones sort of splash the oil away as opposed to it going down into the bore so right over in the direction okay so what we do now is we fire the stones up there's no cut on there whatsoever Until that fluid starts um, flowing then what we do is we put a slight cut on there now this is just a case of feel and we just want to put a bit more of a cut at the top as opposed to the bottom or the middle should I say and then we slacken the stones off and just take one more reading now you can see the middle now has gone to zero top is very very well sort of zero you see that so that is pretty good. So what we should do is leave that now for another half an hour until it's properly cool, see if it, um, see if it closes up anymore. If it does, we take a bit more out. If not, we're gonna leave that and that's be fine. So what we do is we go over to this fresh bore now. Obviously setting, this, um, setting the oil up over into the direction of the stones. We wind the stones out so they just touch the bore, no pressure. You can hear them chattering slightly and that's because, that's because there's no cut on there and there's also no fluid. So put a bit of a cut on there now and we just do an even, we do an even steady up and down movement. The speed in which you go up and down is only going to affect the angle of the cross hatch really and you just sort of get to know the machine, you get to know the feeds and the speeds as to, as to how you do that. So you can see now we've gone down 
the bottom we've got just under a thou and the top about a thou to come out so that's ideal so now what we're going to do we sort of know we know now by that we've gone from two to one thou from giving it that much pressure and the amount that amount of time so we know now what we need to do to sort of get it down to zero and you're better off if you're sort of unsure take take a bit more a bit less out rather than too much because you can't put material back on See now we've gone to just over zero on the top, zero on the middle, and just over zero on the bottom. Now you usually find that when it's, if you get it warm, it tends to open out more in the middle um, than it does at the top and the bottom. So it goes a bit sort of like that shape, but when it cools down, it, it does go back to normal. Just get that fluid through. Although we haven't got a cut on, before the fluid gets through, you can see that I'll move it up and down. And the reason for that is just in case you don't want the stones, you don't want the stones just sitting in one section of the bore, even if they're not putting a cut on. It's not good practice, really. So you can see now, guys, we've got that down to pretty much zero. And because I've had to remove too far, I'm gonna just let that cool leave it for 20 minutes and then come back to it. So there we go guys, been a bit of a strange week for you, didn't do a video Monday, done one on the Tuesday and also straight after on the Wednesday. So sorry to throw your routine out. Um, you probably had to go and watch Coronation Street with the missus on the Monday, unless you're a wife and you have to watch it with your husband, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video. That Cosworth is all done, but until Friday's video guys, have a great night enjoy yourself. I'm not even going to go on about what we got in the workshop today. Totally different video. So um, for all you techies, I hope you enjoyed it. Till then, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we will see you Friday. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.